Ooh, today's video is brought to you by Manscaped, ladies and gentlemen. Been a while since I got to talk about the old balls today. And speaking of balls, this is, ladies and gentlemen, fresh ball fall. Yes, it's the season of pumpkin spice and making sure those boys look absolutely nice. That means sipping cider in a fall breeze and using your Manscaped products to trim that juicy hedge. Ladies and gentlemen, Manscaped is coming at you again once more with the Platinum Package 4.0. In the 10-part Platinum Package, you got everything that you love about the Performance Package, plus shower goodies for all of that grooming game. You've got the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer, Weed Whacker, Nose and Hair Hair Trimmer, featuring proprietary skin-safe technology to protect those delicate parts and that juicy hole. Both are absolutely waterproof, so you can be in the shower and have fun at the same time. In addition to shaving everything, you can completely change your shower routine with the Ultra Premium Body Wash and the Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, having your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Of course, don't forget to apply their aluminum-free Ultra Premium Deodorant, and don't worry, it ain't pumpkin spice, okay? This is cologne quality. And of course, you should always have some signature scent on those lovely pits. You can use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner to make sure your smell is completely top class. No sweat. Mm -mm. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to the Platinum Package 4.0. You got the Manscaped Boxers. Get that Platinum Package this fall. Go to manscaped.com today. Get 20% off and free international shipping when you use the promo code SOG at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code code SOG. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and let's talk about the gaming setup. Now I've never done a setup tour video, mostly because uh, my setup usually gets pretty messy within 24 hours, so I figured ever since I'm done moving, let's actually rip the band-aid off a little bit and I can show you around the some ordinary gamer setup. Now, generally, a lot of people have crazy setups on the internet. I've seen a lot of YouTuber friends have some of the coolest setups I've ever seen. And some of them just literally operate out of a crack den. Now, if you look at neckbeard nests, ladies and gentlemen, some of the best neckbeard nests that I've ever seen uh, always revolve around stuff like this. This is an entire board, r slash neckbeard nests, where like people showcase some of the most degenerate shit around their house. For instance, this one, where you got like the DS games to the side, I can actually smell this room. You've got barely any real estate to operate. You've got some lighters, Genshin Impact, a PlayStation 5 directly in front of a goddamn sewing machine. Why the sewing machine is there, I have no idea, but it is. <coughs> oh, this one is kind of disgusting. I'm sorry. You can smell all the arrays of soda and all of the cleaning supplies available next to this. This is just bad for the computer. Dog, you know it's bad. When you've got your computer monitors literally holding up cans, you're not just throw, just put them in a garbage bag and throw them away. Jesus Christ, guys. This one is just filthy. You got like takeout. You've got Final Fantasy X. <laughs> a, a comb. Ain't no way your ass is grooming. Then they've got just like bottles. I mean, bottles of Coca-Cola. I'm so glad these bottles have not been pissed in and thrown aside. I've literally walked into like friends' houses that are covered in sawdust and bottles of piss. You know when you have bottles of piss, you can literally smell that throughout the entire house? Some of the most disgusting shit. Clean your place, okay? Clean your setups, people. It's disgusting. This is why people make fun of gamers, because your houses are walking biohazards. Stop it. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle, mostly tiered towards the crack den side, but I figured I might as well show you guys some of the new setup, if you will. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to start off by saying that uh, a few weeks ago, like two weeks ago when I was moving, uh, the entire setup pretty much looked like this. Okay, I had a mattress, I had the monitor, I had the very bare essential, okay? The next day, it looked like this. Now, to understand, all right, this is pretty much reflective of that meme. Uh, guys literally live like this and think it's okay. You know what? I'm just going to say it like it is. Two beanbag chairs, a PlayStation, and a CRT television? That's all you need. I could live in a $30 million mansion, and that would pretty much be what my living room consists of. Ain't no need for fancy sofas and, and crazy, you know, everything or furnishings. You just need the bare essentials in life. And when it comes to my gaming setup, it's pretty much as bare essentials as you're going to get. But I wanted to show it because, hell, why not? And, of course, I also want to show you one of my most prized possessions, but I'll leave that towards the very end of the video. 
Now to start off with, uh, I think the most important aspect of a uh, gaming setup is in fact the chair. Now ladies and gentlemen, this chair comes from a brand that I actually completely forgot. Now I know a lot of friends out have like gaming chairs from like some pretty big respectable companies, but me, I buy all of my gaming chairs at Costco. Now if you don't know what Costco is all about, Costco is a company in, in, in North America that's pretty much famous for buying a membership and buying things in bulk and pretty much saving a crap ton of money. Uh, it's a company that makes its money off of membership fees. Notoriously, it is the one company where I, I remember at one point they tried to raise the price of a hot dog. And uh, the, the, one of the company's founders was like, no, like they were violently saying no. Let me just straight up. Let me just straight up put it out there. So when I get some of these gaming chairs, I bought this stuff at a Costco, and I think it pretty much holds up really well. You know, instead of spending three times the money to buy a gaming chair that's effectively the same quality, look, at the end of the day, it all gets made in the same sweatshop on the other side of the world, all right? I'm just paying margin, I'm just paying a fuck ton less in comparison. Now, of course, granted my chair can't go all the way back, all right, like some people's chairs, you know, where they're lying down. But that's what I have a bedroom for. You know, if I need to lay down after a hard days of gaming and a hard day shit, then that's what it's for. Okay, simple as that. Now, of course, next comes into the computer. Obviously, you've all have heard of the computer that I have. Uh, Bisexual Billy. Now it's now it's kindergarten Kenny, no, mostly known for learning about sharing his graphic card between every other virtual machine that I make. Now, of course, this computer over here is pretty stacked, I would say. Like, it's a Ryzen 5, sorry, Ryzen 9 5950X, 128 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 4090, and about all the cooling that I could fit in and a growing boy needs. And at the end of the day, it's the PC that's really overkill. I don't really have this computer just to game. I do a lot of programming, a lot of stuff on the side anyways, and especially when it comes to content creation, it's always advisable to have a really overkill system. This system pretty much serves three virtual machines at any given time, one of them to record all my videos on, one of them to edit my videos on, and one of them to serve as a security hypervisor and general server around the house, okay? So, for instance, if I want to watch any television, any movies, music, or stream games, I mostly stream my PC games to my living room TV if I have to, to game like a normal person as if I was gaming on a console. And for that, I use local cloud streaming, so I have a big Ethernet setup around the house anyways. Speaking of internet, my router is one of these gaming routers that I ended up picking up. I have this paired with a few other routers around my house for networking. And generally, I like this router, not because of its gaming-centric uh, gaming look. It's because I picked this shit up on a sale, all right? One of the common themes you'll find in this video is I literally like to pick up things on sale, all right? Very rarely am I trying to pay full price for any of this computer crap. You don't need to, all right? Look, I'm a smart shopper, all right? You think I'm going to buy any of the... The only thing I'm buying retail is that graphic card because I'm because I have to. Anything else, I ain't bothering with it. But generally, for that network device, it's a pretty good, uh, you know, router for what I picked it up on, and it generally serves the entire house when it comes to networking everything that I have. Nowadays, everything you have is connected to a network, so you need to make sure you have the equipment around your house to handle all of that bandwidth and transferring, and of course, these routers do come with a fair good amount of security features that you also need to make sure you're protected from all the nefarious things outside your local network. Now, of course, even beyond that, I feel like the RGB keyboards and mice are really important these days for the kiddos. So I ended up getting one of these like Steel Series Apex 7s, which uh, are, is a pretty good keyboard. Um, generally, it's got like a crappy OLED thing on the side. Never found the use for it. The only reason I got this, again, was because it was on sale, ladies and gentlemen. Not because I'm particularly a Steel Series simp or anything. I think this is a fine keyboard. You know, it's got all the keys that a growing boy and girl needs. And uh, generally, it does the job pretty good. Now, you might be wondering, damn, Muda, your RGB setup is like really basic, all right? You're not even modifying the keys. That's because I literally did that the first year I had an RGB keyboard. Then I just got so bored of the whole idea that I didn't even bother with it. Now, alongside that, I got a Logitech G Pro mouse, which uh, I think is a pretty decent mouse. Of course, the bottom section of it is missing because, of course, I've lost it. All right. Things tend to happen. 
but I like a wireless mouse because, again, the least amount of wires that I can have generally is the best. I'm not saying that I'm against wires. I have a big mess of them right here simply because I need a little gamer feng shui in my house, too, to remind me that being a gamer is a filthy habit. And, of course, it is what it is. Now, generally, I got some cheapo Logitech desk speakers because I'm not one of those people that needs the craziest headsets in the world. I got one of these Arctic Steel series. Again, remember the word sale, okay? If you start to see a lot of commonality in my peripherals, it's because I picked them up all at the same time. Now, I like the Steel Series uh, headset here, but I'm generally not a big headset wearer. I literally like to prefer having desk speakers because, I, again, headsets get really annoying on my ears. Like, they tend to cramp down and, like, cause me pain after, like, 40 minutes. So just having, like, speakers, easy on me, okay? Totally easy to do, totally doable. I prefer having that to begin with. Now, the best, greatest thing in my setup, all right, bar none, are the monitors, all right? Now... Generally, if you've been watching some of my videos, occasionally I make them ultra wide, okay, or super ultra wide. And the reason I do that is because my monitors are super duper wide, all right? This is what it looks like. Now, why is it that I play around with these monitors over other things? Ladies and gentlemen, these monitors allow me to create content and basically edit my timelines with like just a massive amount of real estate. But also for gaming, which I'm not much of a competitive gamer these days. I don't play a lot of Siege as I used to. But for me, most of my gaming is mostly single player related. So playing things like Spider-Man, like Cyberpunk, like Batman with all this extended field of view is an incredibly immersive experience. I remember years ago when I saw a gaming setup for people combined three monitors to, the, uh, to each other. And now this is kind of the same thing, except without all the bezels. And if you've ever played ultra wide or super ultra wide and you've been fortunate uh, enough to have that, it is totally its own experience of playing. It is absolutely a good goddamn time. And of course, beyond just one of my big super ultra wide monitors, these Samsung ones that I have, uh, this one is a decent monitor. It's like an HDR monitor, which doesn't really mean much because PC HDR is really shit. Uh, but generally, it's got 120 uh, hertz refresh rate. So if I want to play things like Siege or any shooter, it does have a pretty fast refresh rate. And of course, having the extra field of view is a big bonus. I sometimes feel like it's a cheat code because I'm able to see people on the screen that are well off the 16 by 9 aspect ratio cutoff. Uh, so I can, it, it, sometimes it just looks like I'm snapping onto people when I really shouldn't. Of course, beyond that, I've also got another smaller ultra wide, which is right over here, just generally because I like to have another monitor so I can drag things over to and work things as well. Having two monitors is always better than one, just because I like to have the excess of real estate. Now, of course, beyond just having all of this, ladies and gentlemen, I do, in fact, like to play games on bigger screens in a much more relaxed manner. For instance, this futon, which has a bunch of shit onto it that I bought from Walmart. Okay, Wally's World, ladies and gentlemen, represent. Uh, that futon over there next to the mountain of G Fuel, which, uh, you know, again, big thanks to our sponsor there, Code Sog. Check that out. Uh, this futon is right in front of this OLED TV that I ended up picking up again on sale. Now, the reason why I ended up picking up this OLED TV is for the longest time, everyone has always told me OLED TVs are beautiful. And one channel that I watch in particular, Digital Foundry, which literally, I, this is the OLED TV that I, th that I bought off of like their straight up recommendations and their mentions. This TV I picked up again on a sale at like Best Buy. And it's probably one of the best OLED TVs that I got. It's got like a hundred and like, 44 hertz refresh like 4k oled hdr everything and games look absolutely beautiful literally i stopped console gaming as much now that i can drag an hdmi cable right over here from my pc to this monitor connect a playstation controller via bluetooth and literally just play my games at like the utmost fidelity so again, this is one of the better investments that I got. It really adds an extra punch to the setup so I can finally just chill back on the futon, put on a put on a movie, put on a video game, you know, actually play my PC games the way that I want to. I really don't play games with the keyboard and mouse as much as I used to simply because I like to chill back, relax when I'm gaming these days. And just having all of these like peripherals just doesn't really feel like I'm relaxing. It just feels like I alt tabbed out of my work programs just to play a video game.
Now, of course, that's not all I've got, all right? Of course, uh, I think the last big boon of my setup is, in fact, the, uh, the, the bedroom where I've got a bed, I've got a television, and I've got the PlayStation 5. Again, bare essentials, but I feel like that's a pretty good setup for the bedroom-style deal going on. And, of course, the rest of my house is, as you would expect, pretty goddamn barren and empty. You might be like, Muto, why do you live in a place that you don't obviously use 100% of the real estate to? And the reality of that is I just tend to invest my money in smarter purchases versus blow it off on like, you know, stupid frivolous shit. Okay, spend money on family, friends, and of course, make the money snowball into more. That's just generally the way that I live as pretty minimal as I can, simple as I'm going to put it. Now, of course, even beyond just the setup tour, basic stuff for me is also involving this DSLR camera that actually helps capture my face. I used to use like a Logitech webcam for the longest time. Uh, used to use that for streaming, but I switched to this uh, and I actually have it plugged into my computer via an Elgato cam link, just so I can use it as a webcam and record even better with it, simply because the visual quality is just a lot better than having one of those cheapo webcams you pick up at the store anyways. And of course, I've got a standard Shure SM58 like a 58 microphone right here that captures my audio. And of course, the pop filter, which historically from time to time, you may have noticed a cum mark on, is in fact a cum mark, ladies and gentlemen, no joke about it. There was a dirtier part of my life. I used to upload content to a different website entirely, and let's just say it's splash damage. That's all I'm going to leave it at, okay? God damn. But of course, that's pretty much where it ends at. Now, of course, one of the most prized possessions that I own, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, this some may recognize as part of my channel, is the original crap top. Now, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a three gigabytes, three gigabytes of RAM, AMD uh, Athlon processor, AMD Vision graphics, and two cards from Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS. Jesus Christ. Now, if you look real closely, you can see that even, like, keys are kind of missing and erased off. You've got, like, parts of the paint going off. This is just a, uh, this has seen better days. But this laptop means a lot to me because this is where the journey really began. Some Ordinary Gamers was never a channel that started with all of this stuff, all right? This is stuff that I bought well after the fact, years after the fact. I don't really spend crazy amounts of money on myself simply because I live pretty normally. I like to live way be below my means, if anything. And uh, generally, when I buy this kind of stuff, it's usually a treat for me, you know, after years of, of working. But this laptop holds so much memories to me because this laptop is, again, where the journey began. Where videos like Haunted Gaming Creepy Black were uploaded. Or, you know, videos like the Legend of Zelda Let's Play, the first video on the channel. And, and just the first hundred videos, really. That's where the whole journey began. I, I swear to God, I'm not joking when I say this. But the day I die, all right, in my funeral box, the one thing that I want is that laptop. Because that laptop is the start of one of the best things that I've ever done in my life. And that's creating this channel and sharing my life experiences, my gaming experiences, tech experiences, deep web experiences, rants, whatever you want to call it, all with you. You know, at the end of the day, none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the amazing community that we've helped create together. Some Ordinary Gamers is not just Mudahar, it's all of us. That's what the name is about in the first place. It's all of us coming together to get away from the shit in our lives so we can laugh at something, we can cry at something, and we can just have a good time together. I will always be thankful of you and the time you take to watch my videos, donate to a stream, you know, use any of our product codes on anything. It's always something super duper appreciated by me and anybody that's ever helped do something for this channel. You know, it's an experience that we've all had together. And one day, one day we'll fall off. One day we'll become irrelevant. And one day we'll have to sign off and close things off for good. But until that day comes, we're just going to have a good time, vibe together, laugh, and uh, hopefully you know, make memories to come. Ladies and gentlemen, all I got to say is I'm utterly thankful for everything that has happened. We've done well over 10 years of this channel, and who knows if we'll be around for like 50, 60 more years. Hell, who knows if I'm even around the next day. Life is unexpected in a lot of ways. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, I guess the best message is thank you all for sticking around. Thank you all for continuing to stick around, and hopefully we can have plenty of more amazing experiences to go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am.